Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are... Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Mate, here we are. The United States Bulge. Finally. I love Finally. me a bit of bulge. I love me a the, bulge. This is the biggest one I've seen in a long <laughs> time. <laughs> so this is the United States Late War starter set. They're calling it bulge. These are kind of Battle of the Bulge era units. But it's really going to cover much of late 44 through 45. A lot of new stuff in here. We'll be right back when we've got these boxes open. Ooh. Boom. Look at that. It smells like victory, mate. Does it? Smells like victory. In the morning. Yeah. That's a lot of Oosh. sprue, dude. A lot of dude sprue. A lot of dude sprue, dude. Oosh. Right then, I'll sort this pile out. So, John, should we do the? Should we talk about the paperwork? We can do the paperwork, yes. And then you wave for sprue at them, and I'll talk about the unit card. Is yes. that how we do it? Yeah, I think that's a, a good way of doing it. All right. You can get the right back. Away. Pock her up and tell them, read out what's on the box, John. Oh, why do you do that? So, Spearhead Force contains one times M4 Jumbo 76 or an M4 oh. Jumbo 75 tank. Four M4 Easy 8s, 76. Uh, two M26 Pershings. Ooh, that's like fantasy tanks, right? Big tanks. Uh, four M24 Chaffees. Good like to see that they're those. in there. Three M4 Sherman with the Calliope launchers. Cal or Calliope? Cool. Calliope. I, Calliope. I don't actually Calliope. know how you pronounce it. We're going to go with Calliope today. Two of my favourite M8 Greyhounds. Beautiful model. Uh, two Jeeps, which are also epic. <laughs> They're very nice. Uh, you get a parachute rifle platoon, mm. and then you get your sundries, which you can always yeah. expect. Yeah. All right, so what we got? Two, six, nine, ten, fourteen, eighteen vehicles. Not bad. Almost all of these new kits, with the exception of the M4 Calliope kit. The Calliope bit is new, but the sprue has been out for a while. Right. Everything else is either brand new or pretty new, like the Greyhound. It's not brand new, but it's part of, you know, version 4's releases. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, then. A quick look at the paper, then, before we go on to it. So we get your American start force that will pull out leaflet. Always good. Say this every time. I really like the that they give you these in so far as you've got build instructions for all the variants that it is giving you unit cards for. Generally, you can build variants for this that are not on this sheet. So, for example, the Calliope, you can actually build this as a wide range of M4... A threes, a very wide, including the 105 millimeter, a 76, and a up armor. There's a Collins hedge cutter. I mean, there's a lot that. of variants of Sherman at this point. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that that one does do allow you to do a lot of different variants. It's going to show you in here how to build the Calliope version. Sweet. Um, for example, and then uh, later on, it gives you a, an example army list for 99 points. It's generally played as a 100 point game, so that's pretty good. A little bit in the back and saying, well, if you like these, maybe you should get Check some more. Please. Yeah, top of the list of things you might want to add to this force is the M18 Hellcat. Yeah, boom! That's, that's, that's not in here. You can't put everything in the No, you can't set, have you know? all of the new things. Most of it. You get your Flames of War rulebook. You've got that lovely carcinogenic, freshly with? cut, plasticated paper. Oh, mate, perks you right up. Bag. That does. You carry on. I'm going to have a little whiff. You can have a little whiff, a wee whiff, and you get your unit cards and your decal sheets. Decal sheets for the US forces, particularly easy. Stars. It's a lot of white stars yeah. in different sizes. Some are circled, and some, some are, are circled, some are not. They do arrange that there are other types of US because these don't have the do a sheet which has got the tank numbers on, you know, like the model numbers. Yeah. These don't have that on. But generally, you just can't see those anyway. Like, you just put a little squiggly like, white paint line on. Yeah. But they're Two different things. sizes stars, so you're going to write down to the Jeeps and then up to the and up to the Pershings. Nice couple decal sheets. Pershing. Right. Unit card-wise, you've seen this before, no doubt. So this is your kind of overall force composition card. Shows you the different forces. So you've got the M4 late tank company the m24 chaffee company but what it's going to tell you so these are the armies in this book mm. bulge each of these starter forces corresponds to a particular book yes and the books in flames of war are like mini releases 
and they like, and they work like codexes. There's, there's a combination of armor yeah, lists they in there. Yeah, they update all the bits and bobs and add yeah, new, yeah. new toys. So if you want him to play late 44 in World War II or early 45, that's what this is aimed at. That's good a lot though. of the stuff in here wasn't at Normandy, didn't fight in France, yeah. it comes over later. And generally in this box, which we're going to come to, you'll have AHQ, which is the formation it is expecting you to use in here, which is the Sherman Late Tank Company. Now, mm. it's a lot of Shermans. There is a lot of Shermans. There are one, two, three types of Shermans in here. Because the way this works now, as we come to that, is you can, in the D-Day, in the, in the earlier period, everything's very much like table of organization strength. It's like, this is how we built the units before D-Day, and they went over a paper strength. Right. And then they started getting shot at, and then we started replacing stuff with what was new and what was hanging around. So now you can take formations that are much more blended in terms of which model of tank they have. So rather than saying I've got a platoon of 76 mil M4A1s, because yeah. that was like from the factory to the depot issued to the troops as a set. Straight out, yeah. The one that replaces it is what they've got. Okay, and so you get quite mixed units then. So yeah, and as a game, as a player, the tactical nuance that's quite interesting. So, for example, the Sherman Jumbo is an assault tank. It's an up armored Sherman. It's actually quite slow because really? it's carrying a lot of extra armor on, and there's not really any more power in the vehicle. But you got one of those in the platoon. You know how the mistaken target rule works? You know, to take the hits on that one. I could soak up a fair few. I could right soak before. up. Yeah, it's got much better chance of soaking. Yeah. Up, True. True so anyway, the M4 Sherman Late Platoon. Is consists of two M4 Sherman late 75s. So that's that that's the E3. That's, right. That's that one. This bad boy. So if we have a look, shall we have a look at that sprue? And then we'll go into a bit more detail. Oh, that's good to see. About the formation. 2021. So the the E3, not the the M4 A3, not the A not the A3 E8. Right, because they're the same but different. Because they're the same but different. So that's this one. That is one. 2014, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this one's been out for a while. Um, any of you that have got... So this was one of their earliest Sherman sprues. It's very different from the M4A1 sprue if you've got the kind of hit the beach um, and the D-Day era Shermans. They've all got cast holes. And so they've got very rounded, rounded surfaces. Yeah. This one, um, this kit, is more complicated to build, there's no doubt about it. It's still pretty straightforward, but there's a lot more to it. It's not like six to eight pieces. Yeah, yeah. Which is the, the very newest kits, which only make one variant. But you got the option to take a different glasses plate on it. And you can see over here, you've got like an up armored where they've like caught a bit of Panther off the side of a tank and, just and riveted it. into the front, that kind of thing. Yeah, they did all of that kind of stuff. Um, there's actually the the Ordnance Bureau tested it all after the war. This is like, they call it a plique armour. They put, put, put like slabs of concrete that they did, put steel it, was bolts. It, was it didn't more, work. It didn't work. It was more of a sort of yeah, yeah, psychological... Yeah, it makes me feel better. What do you mean it doesn't work, mate? What are you talking yeah, about? <laughs> Clearly there's more stuff between me and, <laughs> and that enemy that round. <laughs> um, so what, yeah, the, the other thing you've got on here, which is really nice, is you've got two very different turrets. Yeah, so you've got the, about that. The... So the bigger, the the rounded turret is the same cast turret, I think, as yeah, from, the, looks... um, from the A1. Whereas this bigger turret, you can mount the 76 mil in. This is a later version of the turret. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm in danger of being wrong. Well, don't, you don't have to, that's good enough. I think this turret was developed for a different tank that never really went into service. Oh, really? Mm. Uh, uh, like uh, Something between, something before the Pershing, Right. Like another heavy tank design that, that never made it into full production. Sort of well, we've got a nice turret. But, the, but slap it on this there. turret gets reused. But this mounts the 76, I think, mainly. Um, and you see the, one of the differences with this one, that, that turret's got a very square-looking mantlet. Yes. Which you'll see up, up here. All right. But with this, one of the other things that's really nice about um, Flames of War kits, where you generally, where they fit, there's enough pieces on the entire sprue to build two completely different turrets. Mm. They even, they don't, they don't skimp. So they've not, 
They've not oh, used... Oh, yeah, even down to the, the two turret pegs. There's two thing. turret pegs. There's two lower... So they could design the lower turret in such a way both. as you only get one because mm. it fits both. That's the kind of trick that a lot of ga games companies play. So you can build one of these and use it as two different tanks. And that's quite nice. That and nice. also it means if you break something or lose something, you could just build the other one. Mm. Spare hatches... And like a lot of battlefront, there's spare machine guns on here because they are a bit fragile things like yes. your fifty cows. Yeah. Uh, but between building several of these, you're not going to run out. Even if you break two on one sprue, you've still got two on the next <laughs> one. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Plenty. And they're not they're not that fragile. But this is one that's primarily used in American tanks. It's not what very widely exported, so it's uh, so it doesn't have the three part transmission cover like you see on the British versions. Yeah. Yeah. But interestingly, with this. This part, I think, is interchangeable with the other ones. Okay. So I think they reuse the, some of the... Because in the sort of digital design, I you think they can reuse some of the pieces. Slot, yeah. Yeah, I think that that, that transmission cover probably fits the, the other kit. Just Ooh. if you're missing one or whatever. Spares. That's that. So what does this company, this, this veteran tank company, what does it consist of? It consists of this unit of two M4... Sherman tank platoons. It then has another one, which is either M4s or M26 Pershings. It has a mandatory one, which is either M4s or M5s or M24s. So it can be the Sherman's heavy tanks. Sherman's or heavy tanks, one of them. Yeah. Sherman's or light tanks, <laughs> another one. You are all. Wow. Then up to one Sherman tank platoon, additional wow. one. Up to another super Pershing. Which is Ow. which is an even bigger one, which we might have a card. We might or might not have a card right in here. Up to one veteran armored mortar platoon, and then another art, uh, artillery. Yeah, so it can be M4 Sherman Calliope tank platoon or assault gun platoon. Mm. So hopefully that made sense in the text <laughs> that well, just went out the I side mean, of the screen. As you said, I mean, the formations were a big mishmash at this point. Well, right? it gets That's... worse. What do you mean it gets worse? It gets worse because although. For 11 points, you get two M4A3s. Yeah. You can replace them with other tanks, uh, other models, like I was in, in Right. So you can replace any or all M4 Shermans with M4 Easy 8s for two points. You can replace them with 76 versions for one point each, or you can replace them with a Jumbo 75 for two points, or a Jumbo 76 for three points. And that's just your headquarters platoon, mate. <laughs> Um, John's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So the actual tank platoon itself, veteran tank platoon, so the basic three, four or five tanks for 15, 20, 25, we're still on that same sprue, mate. We're all, we're all right, Just, yeah? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so again, for each, each of them can be replaced by an easy eight for two points or a 76 for one point or a jumbo for two or three if it's a jumbo 76. Is that so, fit, sorry, is that variance off? So you could have a mishmash within You could have three different tanks. Completely, and that's the, yes. wow. So, well actually, one, two, three, four, and the basic one, five. You have five different tank models as one tank platoon. I would recommend you don't do that, because that's hard on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> We're struggling to just say it, let alone think about it. Well, wow, okay. Um, All the options. So this Sherman, in relation to the D-Day Sherman, because this is based on the um, the A3, it is slightly better. It is slightly up armor, so it's got fr it's got front armor of seven rather than six. Um, yeah, and your skill levels and so forth. You've got the motivation is four plus. They're careful. They're trained, but it Yankee ingenuity. Which is okay. three plus on your tactics, which are your movement orders, but they're movement orders based on skill, which I'm starting to realize different movement orders use different ones of these stats. Oh no! <laughs> which is why the blitz move seems superior, and it is, because that's skill based, the blitz move. But the Russians tend to have terrible skill ratings, but they have good morale ratings. Mm. So they can do the follow me order, which comes after your movement. Which never seems as good as the Blitz. Simple. No. No, but the Russians are far more likely to pass that test. So it suits different armies. Yeah, yeah. In that's, different ways. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So that's, 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 you've still got the stabilizer rule. You've still got self-defense here. Because, you know, 
you get out the tank and fire the 50 cal into the air, right? Legit, mate. You yeah. would do that. Yeah, 100% you would, I would. do that. Yeah, you, you would. Because I'm an idiot. Because <laughs> you're an idiot. So that's the M4A3 platoon. So let's have a look at some of these sub... The, the, the different other, Shermans the other that are going to go in there. Because this is the meat of your unit. So the first one I've got a card for is the M4 Easy 8. I'm probably going to get some of these tank designations wrong. They're all M4. It's all right, M4. E, uh, uh, M for E something, usually M three in this case. Yes. Then E something else. Yes. And that's a lot to that's, get your... that's, So this is an M four A three E eight. That is what an E eight wow. is. So it is essentially the M four. It's a Sherman. It's based around the um, A three hull, which is the other one that we've looked at. Right. That's kind of inside. It's a lot like that tank. Outside, however, there are some differences. Same but different. So what do you get for your, your E3? Well, your your skill and morale ratings, they're all the same. Your armor ratings are the same. However, you still got a tactical move of 10 inches. It crosses on a two. It's the E8, John, if you'll see the E8. It's got, it's it's got, got different wider wheels, tracks. Mate. And it's got different suspension. Yeah. It's got different things. wheels and like a double width track. Yes. That's cool. It's got much wider tracks. So it's got a cross cross section of two. And yeah, it's got it's got different suspension system. You can see the moulding. Yeah, on that's that. the, the compared to the like the, the, the kind of the twin bogies that you're used to seeing, mm. it's very it looks very different. Um there's a bigger gap, they're bigger wheels. Are there more of them? Two four six. Two, four, same, same amount of wheels, but it looks completely different. It looks like some sort of yeah. gas stop system in between some those gas wheels stop there. system. You heard oh, it from some proper there. pimped up suspension. Yeah, yeah. It's got a, it's got a much wider hill. I don't know why it's got these kind of almost like connecting. I don't know, like buttresses along the side of the upper hull. Scanning. Oh, what on the like the skirty bit? Yeah, there's like there's like Both a rim little... with. With, with, yeah, I don't know whether that's for ease of storage of things to stop things like sliding around. Separate, com yeah, whether it's surely. delivery. I mean, it can't be it because it, it, it feels like it's a bit of a shell trap, to what be honest. It? You don't want some of the catches your shell and redirects it towards the armor. So I'm not quite Ooh. sure what role, but it's a thing that's quite distinctive about this one. It's obviously it's got a bigger, uh, what looks like a bigger, but it may actually be supposed to be the same. It's got that turret that we saw with the 76. Right? Yeah, it's got the longer. The longer yeah. sweeping back. Yeah, it's got it's got much more of a of a back to got it. Same nice extra, big round hatch, a, a a big thick mantle. Yeah, got the same extra armor on the. Yeah, the glasses plate glasses and the plate. up armored. Oh, it's got it's got the two options. Look, yeah. So you'll see, there's one that's really quite flat that's higher up here, and then there's the one with the extra armor with the on. with the gun. Yeah, single. Oosh. Yeah, the and two different oosh. versions. So. What does your Easy Eight get? So it's got this. It's got this improved suspension, wider track. It's got smooth ride. Oh yeah. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. You gotta. You gotta have the hatches open on this one. Oh. Playing. Playing the music. <laughs> um, so smooth ride. It does not suffer the plus one penalty to hit for stabilizer if it moves less than four inches. So now the, the Americans with the stabilizer, they can move and shoot twice, but they're plus one to their hit number. Yeah. So they've effectively keep their stationary rate of fire because of the stabilizer, but it's not that good. So it's affecting it. But because this is a smoother, ride, oh yeah, you can move up to four inches. Four inches is That's quite a, blitz a bit. Move, right? Yeah, except you don't have to make a skill check. Oosh! And you could still blitz move, presumably. That says it can move up to four inches. Yeah. Wow. There we go. So. That's that's the that's the easy eight. I mean, look, other people are going to give you much better reviews. Tell you all about the different suspension, the all the things, track, sweet sweet ride, um, and so forth. It is a newer kit, so let's just have a look at it. The strong, in a bit more detail. Strong features on this really really kind of confident sprue, nicely spaced out. It's not cluttered, you know, not like let's skimp on plastic and put everything really tightly together. Sprue gates on it. These are really these are really nice. They're thin. They're well spaced out. It doesn't feel like anything in the here is under tension. You know, it's going to snap. Yeah. When, as soon as you put a blade to it, it's just going to like ping out of existence. Even like the machine guns where they normally do like a double uh, yeah. doofer around it and you end up just snapping the barrel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, now what are these? Ooh. We've got some extra plates here, John. 
don't know what they're well, for. Well, these little things, they must be like mud guards, mud... Scanning. Uh, so in here, it, it's not providing with a card to make the up-armoured version, so it's not providing with instructions. Oh. I, suspect, I suspect there's a couple of plates uh, for up-armour in it. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Um, and also, uh, good, glad to see, they have provided us with new surplus track pieces. Because the tracks track are bigger. Bits, they're double the width. The tracks are wider. Yeah. You've got a nice little bit of storage here. This little, uh, like, I don't know, kit box, whatever, mm. is smaller than the, than the one you've had on others, which is nice. So it's just going to provide you with a little bit of variety. Yes. And what I like, what I want to see in every new kit sprue, I want to see another bit of new storage. A new random bit of storage. A new random bit of storage that I could put on anybody's tank anywhere in mm. there. So these are the easy eights. Sweet. Which you get four of. M4, E3, E2, <gasps> Sherman Jumbo. Wow. This is the fatty patty of the organization. It's big, right? She is a big girl, my friend. Sherman Jumbo. So you get a Sherman Jumbo card, but the, these are integrated within the platoon. You only get one of these in here. That's a wee beastie, mate. Front armor, 11. You American players never seen anything like this. Woo, really... nah. 11? That's quite the jump from seven. Well, it is because things like your pack 40, penetration 11 or 12. Panzer Force, penetration 11, 12. Do you I know what I mean? It's going to be maybe like an extra pip on the A3, mm. like eight, yeah, yeah. maybe. This thing, this thing can bounce mainline anti-tank weapons, and that is that is a bit. Yeah, I thought it'd be an eight, maybe a nine. Yeah, yeah. So this is That's seriously a pump. It's a big, big jump. Now, if I'm right, this one's got wider tracks, also. Yeah. You'll see, but it's still got the original Sherman suspension. But I think these yeah. wider tracks, they're not actually that much wider. They've got track extensions on them. Yeah. To help distribute the weight of it. They've got little flaps, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's a model, yeah. I want to check, check that other one with the double width. The other one, the... Yeah, it, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are it's exactly different. Correct. Yeah, this is the one with the extensions. So again, it's, it's, about, it's about ground pressure. Yeah, so these things don't just sink in the mud. Um, so like the other Shermans that we've seen, this one is new. It's a very, very confident sprue, loads of space, really nice, light sprue gates. I could, yeah, I could pop these tracks out, look. Popping them out, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look, I, I could literally just, just pop that out. Obviously, I didn't clean, clean that up. Uh, some, some of their other earlier kits... You, you couldn't get in there. No, no. That's and that that's because of the the stew gate is strong enough to hold it in place. Yes, but not not requiring a lot of work. Not and that's great because you don't damage things getting them out. Two different turrets. Yeah, what's that all about? What? Because you say two. Well, different one will be turrets. for the seventy six, and one will be for the seventy five. Because you have an option for either. I think most of these were they, the seventy five. They look the same physically. They look the same. Other than the gun that you bigger. might slap in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we've any look in here, it's probably... Is it telling you to build either? They're the same, right? Are they exactly the same? I, I feel like they are exactly the same. Maybe looking, they're just allowing scanning. you to be interchangeable. Mate, that, that's even better than right. Because you get I the two barrels, have... perhaps you can get I two... I think you might be right, John. I want to, you know, just... just that's... I've never seen that. That's you know, so I further. was assuming that there were two different turrets, but I think you might be right. They'd be exactly Just the same turrets, the two different guns. straight up the option, whichever version you want to build. Wow, that is that is remarkably generous uh, of a manufacturing company. And this one, so again, so with the newer kits, they're experimenting a little bit. This has got the gun and the mantle molded in yeah. together. Yeah, and they've, they've, so you don't have a one key. Wait. Yeah, so. Obviously, that's that's risky for them. The chance that this piece is going to break during mm. manufacture shipping or whatever. But it's good because it means you never end up with a gun on the wonk. And, and definitely, if you build these tanks quickly, that is a risk. That's quite an interesting direction they've gone with the kit. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And it's a clean. It's, a clean. it's yeah. crisp. Molded. I like it. Looks nice. Um, it might be because it's bigger. So on the jumbo, if you actually look at the picture, the mantlet is really big. Really? Yeah. It, it looks like like it's supposed to be a counterweight. Or it's like a big <laughs> lump of metal. Because you think about them shooting at a tank where they 
where the armor is, because because armor is very thick. heavy, yeah. the armor goes in the places where you're likely to get hit. You just can't cover the whole. So the top armor is near nil. There's no armor underneath. You have to make choices and to concentrate the armor in the place where you're going to get hit. No matter what you are doing, if you are fighting, the gun mantler <laughs> is going to be exposed. Yep. Or you're not firing. Yeah. Right. That's true. That is true. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's the bit. But if you think about the kind of the profile, the what the tank looks like straight on, a bit of it hopefully is in some kind of defile. You know, it's in a slightly hold down position. This is the area between the gun barrel and the deck. That's almost certainly where the tank is going to get. It. That's the middle. Yeah. That's what they're aiming at. Yeah. There. Center target. Center mass. Yeah. So, so, for example, the mid-war Panzer III gets an armor upgrade. And as a game, you're like, oh, so just upgrade the armor by 20 mil. A bit, you go to a museum and you look at that and say, it's, a, it's, it's, not just, all of it. it's a plate of rolled steel about this long and about that high. That's up armoring that armor tank. On yeah. the vital, <laughs> vital that's section. that's probably where you take the hit. Yeah. Yeah? That's quite, so, the, mm. so, yeah, the mantle on this thing is really, really Chunky. big. It's jumbo. jumbo. <laughs> Only get the one. So... Um, I suspect that that's, that that's partly like, this is going to let you test out this theory, mm. but sticking one of those with a front armor of 11, that's impenetrable by a lot of decent anti-tank weapons. Yeah. It'll back, cause you get a dice as well. So you've got minimum result 12, 13 at range. I mean, that's pretty solid for this, this, thing this period. Yeah. It's take like... the hits for you. Wow. And with that mistaken target rule, it takes the first hit, the, or the, the most hits. Mm. You know, you've got three tanks. Get four hits, go, well, I want the two on this one. Yeah. Yeah? Because it'll doing, doing. So you're more expensive That's... tanks with the heavier armaments. That's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. Make them up, paint them quick. Make them up, paint them quick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the, that's the jumbo. The final sort of Sherman type that we've got in here. We looked at the jumbo, we've looked at the Easy 8, so, <clears throat> and we've looked at the uh, A, the M4A3 standard. Yes. The last thing you get, the reason you've got all those M M4A3s, the reason you've got all of those, is actually they're what they're expecting you to make the artillery out of. So we've got the M4 Sherman Calliope card, which you can have up to one of, and it's embedded in the company, which means it's going to support with that force morale. It's one of the units for calculating morale. Mm. There's a lot of artillery in Flames of War. You can take it, but it's a support unit. Yeah. This is this is part of it. You stick that you hide this behind behind a hill, and it's helping you stay on the table wow. for the rest of the game. So these come in three, four, or five uh, vehicle units. Interestingly, at eight, eleven, and thirteen points. And of course, the way that the artillery works, three and five are magic numbers because three or four is this value, five and or less. six is that value. So um, you've got three of them in here. Uh, yeah. So, I think he uses the salvo template, like most of the rocket artillery, which I think is a one foot square. That is a big old template. Yeah, chunky. It's on. It's on the um, the M4 hull, so it's got you know it's got seven front armor and four side armor. It starts a slightly different because obviously it's an it's an artillery mm. platform. Confident four plus, but counter attack is six. Its skill is trained, but its assault is five. No. And you don't have a stat line for the gun. I was about to say, what happens to the, the main gun? Cause I think if you fire the main gun, the whole thing falls off. Because it, it's like, literally, <laughs> looking at the picture here, it's got like, I never knew it was like that. You've got mm. the, that the massive gun, rod. Uh, the gun's got an elevating rod the... for the artillery. Is that for... how they change the angle of the rod? I believe hits? so, yes. yes. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, but I think they, they, did, they did try firing them, and they just fell apart. The apparatus that's, <laughs> that's holding yeah. it in place. That's not what you want, especially if it's still loaded, right? <laughs> no, no. Now, what I cannot tell you is why the Americans decided they wanted to do this with tanks. Yeah, that's odd, right? I mean, it could be that it was a D-Day thing. It could have been an invention that was worked on for D-Day and they felt they didn't expect to be able to get trucks. Because you wouldn't put a truck-mounted rocket battery on a beach no. that you were fighting no, over. No, that comes in much later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. whereas the, the, that might have been the point. Why did we invent this? And, well, we could put a tank on the beach. But they did, did they use them? No. Well, they did. They, 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 they did. I believe they did, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but nobody else seems to have mounted these things on top of a tank. You know, I know the Americans had loads of tanks, but they didn't need to design it, this for a tank. So I think, I think that that's probably the reason. Now, this is made out of resin, this part. It attaches to the turret. And if you go back to what I said about those E3s, is you've got two complete turrets on those. So the A3s, not E3s. Yes. So you could build, you want to be, everyone I've ever seen of this is on the 75mm turret. So you could build the standard 75mm turret um, M4A3. And have that. And glue that on, and you use the 76 mil version as an as an alternative version of the same tank. Sweet, yeah. Happy so days. Swap, swap that in and out, and you just you just press that together. I've right? just pushed that together, so yeah. yeah. So I'm normally a bit nervous about resin things, and me. Um, well, well, just just in just in general, you know, it's just not a material I'm so familiar with. But when I had a look at that um, earlier, the the. The fidelity is really nice. I mean, it's got holes for the rockets to come out and the, of. And they're not, an they're not shonky, port. they're neat, aren't they? You can see clear definition of each tube, yeah. which is nice, considering how big yeah, it is. Yeah, considering how small not that you're ever I tried see. to get it focused yeah, it did on not the work. Shot, it doesn't and I couldn't like show you the holes. You just have to believe us. <laughs> but they are there, and they are, it's really nice fidelity. Yeah. So Easy. that's that's an interesting little addition, mm. you know? So. So, rockets. Rockets, how does rockets, it work? Salvo template, right? Feels amazing. It's got a big boom template, but there's a reason it's only 13 points, right? <laughs> um, it's because it's got an anti tank power of two and a fire power of five up. Rockets are what? about intensity of barrage, but they're not, they're not terrifically. Just loud cracks and bangs and whistles and. It's, sho the it's shock and awe stuff. It's not going to kill a lot of people, right? But it's going to deliver a terrifying bomb bombardment yeah, within pretty... a short space of time. Yeah, wow. the the amount of munition you can put onto target is very high, but you're not going to knock out bunkers and things like that with it. You're probably not going to knock out armored vehicles, dogging infantry with a firepower of five up. It's not that spectacular. But, but you can get a lot of hits out, right? But you can get a lot of things hit. You can get a lot of things <laughs> suppressed. Yeah. Do boom, so that's interesting. And as I say, it doesn't make the, the, the tank is not stuck with that because you've got two turrets. Yes, yeah, you know, really nice, really, nice. really flexible. This box that's good. Yeah, definitely. All the options. M twenty six Pershing. So as I mentioned before, you've got the option for two, for one of these in lieu of one of the compulsory Sherman tank platoons. So your M26 Pershing, it's got the same stats, motivation is four, skill is four, tactics is three up, Yankee ingenuity, hit on a four. So you've not got that D-Day problem of, of everybody being a rookie, where everybody's hit on three. Right, yeah, they, they've, got, <laughs> they've, they've, they've seen some things now. Yeah, yeah, two, three, four, or five tanks. Effectively, they're almost 10 points a model. It's 19 for two, 29 for three, da -da -da, 49 okay. for five. You get two of them in this box, two of them. So what are you getting for your, for your two? That's this big. is not, this is not the world beater that you might hope that it, that it is. Is it not? Because I'm looking at it and it's like, especially when one is called a super Pershing, you're like, whoa. Well, we'll, we'll come to the super Pershing. That's later. But the straight up Pershing, it's got a front armor of nine. Front armor nine is solid, but for its, its period in the war, it's not remarkable. There's nothing, you know, this this compares, it's comparable with late war tanks, but it's not magnificent. Um, it's certainly no King Tiger. It's got a 90 mil gun. Now that's good. Yeah. Anti-tank power of 14 and a fire power of three up. So you're going to be able to deal with Panther, Tiger, something that a lot of the Sherman, the, the mainline yeah, tanks really struggle with. Couldn't go and do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But nine front armor, six side armor, not great, but you know they're only they're only ten points each. I know that sounds like a lot, but the, your kind of five point tank can't fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so time. you've got a chance this, here. This thing, this thing can having a um, pair of them. I mean, a, a pair of them. So I think what this force it's got that. As I say, I keep coming back to it. It's got a lot of flexibility. You try a lot of different things. So, okay, I'm going to get I'm going like to get that. myself a tune of of these. So I go away and buy another you know Go box of Pershings because yeah. I think that's what I need. But I've got a, I've got a lot of different things in my force to try out. Oh, that's good. Nice. But in the further down in the in the options, you have the option for the uh, T twenty six Super Pershing. Super Super Trooper. 
So the difference with the T26 Super Pershing, oh, it doesn't give you the build instructions in here, but it has given you the card. Mm. That's interesting. I think it is the same sprue though. Is there a diff are there different turret options on that sprue, Jim? It doesn't seem to be Let's as much as it's two whacking great guns yeah, on Yeah, there's it. definitely two turrets that. on that. Oosh, oosh. One of which is much bigger than the other. Oh my god, I didn't <laughs> even realise. <laughs> Mate, one's twice the size of the other yeah, one. Yeah, but it was such a it, I thought it was like a little escape <laughs> a little escape canoe or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's got another tank. Oh in my it. god. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing that's the, the big one. Yeah, Whoa. absolutely. So if you go on to um, a Flames of War, you type in the product code, which in this case is BM29. That's a very low number. It's actually a 2014 kit. kit. Really? Yeah, so they had some plastic stuff came out, I think, with World of Tanks. You know, the original tanks. Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. And, and their previous, when they moved to version 4, they put some stuff that they weren't going to produce stats for and balance into the game until the time came. So the, uh, many people have this. Um, yeah, but compared to... It's wide as well. It is very wide. So they don't... The US tanks... And why do the US not bother with a heavy tank? I have no idea. Until very late. I mean, they're, they're they fighting Panther well, and it's stuff. It's because they've got they? all the tools. The tooling's done, mate. Yeah. And they're all about mass production. They're all about mass production. Is that right? Is that what it's about? So that's partly it, but it's also it's about shipping. To ship one of these, you could probably ship four or five Shermans in the same space. And you know, with the German vehicles are limited by the fact they need to fit on a railway car. Right. So yeah. even yeah. even your Tiger, your Panther, they're all about as wide as each other. So because that okay. is a hard limit on the size of the vehicle, yeah, yeah, yeah. is it's going on a train to get anywhere. To get you near. This thing's going on a boat to get wow. anywhere. Um, is a late one thing because so it's it's strikingly wide compared to most of the tanks we've handled. Um, but yeah, T twenty six super Pershing. Then that's an option in here. This is more what you're looking for. Go on, then what you, you got, want to go, on, go on. So they come in units of one. Units of one. <laughs> units of one to rule them all. One for sixteen points. One okay. tank. One tank, 16 Front points. Front armour, 13. All right. 88's anti-tank power, 14, 14, I think. And you get an added dice to your 13. I oh, mean... Doing! Wow. Uh, tactical move of 10 inches. Still can move. Still can move. You know, it's, it's got drain for up, common for up, careful for up. And then the 90mm on the Super Pershing is even bigger. Yes. So, so, yeah, you look at the size of these guns. So this, this one I've got on this side... It's still a pretty big gun for World War II. Come on, yeah. Long 90 mil. But this thing on the... It's on insane. The, it's enormous. I mean, that make a Team Yankee gun that looks more... surely is like the width. It's longer yeah. than the tank. Absolutely. It's as long as the tank. Yeah. It's a huge thing. Um, and this, this almost like artillery gun shield... Yeah, what's that all ...is like a sprung counterweight system, I think, to stop the gun from just diving into the ground and staying there because of the weight of it. It's so shield. long. Yeah, it's a really, really long barrel gun. Wow. Which, of course, means it's got that high velocity. Shot comes out <laughs> a lot of pressure. And you can tell, because the standard jumbo has got an anti tank power of 40, a per Pershing. Pershing. Anti tank yeah. power 14. This one, 18. That's sort of like, we're almost in Team Yankee now, right? We're in this Team is, Yankee land This now. is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a heck of a gun, that is. Would you take, would you take one of them? 16 points yeah 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 <laughs> I, I i can't remember they're definitely a couple of pershings some pershings made it to europe and saw some action okay like but the, the like dying the last days of the reich yeah. but they're definitely there's footage of at least one of them fighting super pershing i don't know i don't know but you know this is a war game this isn't this isn't yeah this isn't yeah history. don't you yeah. know the, the possibility that these could have made it to europe i think i don't think this is like a 1948 tank you know what i mean yeah, i think yeah, yeah. i think it, it, there's possibilities it, it could have quite been quite a radical change in the, the the shape and design of it as well Interesting. so they, they've you given up that. on the, the kind of logistic requirements they're not they're not going to let themselves if we're going to make a heavy tank mm. Then we can't be asking ourselves, well, how many of these can we fit on a Liberty ship? Because we'll, because if we do that, we'll never make a heavy tank. Yep. 
Because that argument is always lost. That's why the the, German, the Americans persist with the Sherman. I think one of the things that um, Army Ground Forces and senior echelons of the military come out the other side of World War II, um, particularly in response to the Battle of the Bulge and so forth, thinking, we're not going to do it this way again. Right. You know, we made, we made choices about about materiel and, and operational expediency and that this is good enough but it costs lives right we, we could have developed a better tank we would have had less of them progress in europe probably would have been slower but there would have been more logistical problems but there would have been less dead people yeah. or less dead americans yes yeah anyway um because i mean they definitely they the fighting in in normandy was tough in the beginning mm. when the germans had armored forces because the sherman was borderline it wasn't obsolete but it was on the way out by 1944 christmas they're up against king tigers in this operation uh, this Different this game uh... this tank is just not up to the job at all wow. no and they didn't they didn't even do things like we had stop gaps like the firefly we were fighting yep. the Germans for longer, yep. saying, this is okay, but there are still problems yes. with this, and we must do something about that. But whilst that's happening in the background, let's get these boys out. Yeah, yeah, Get the yeah, five lines yeah. out. Something, something is better than nothing. Yeah, something. But America had time. America gets to choose when it does D-Day. America gets to choose yeah. the forces it brings. Yeah. We're fighting an existential war. Yeah. About, you know, we, we had less choice, but we still recognise that... that that the basic Sherman wasn't enough for the job that was expected of it. And the reality of most operations is when the Americans are fighting, is there are Shermans, there aren't Panzers. Mm. <laughs> and so that it is good enough for that. Yeah. But not good enough for the guys that the ended wall. up fighting the Panthers yeah. and had no hope Bless of them. success. That was your American big, big tank, right? Yeah. Your Pershings. You feel like, what's like to be a Soviet player? Tell the Nazis, I've got bigger tanks yeah, than you today. Take that. Take Ish. that, eh? Um, let's have a look at some of the other things that we get in here then. It's not over yet. We're still it ain't over going. Yet, those, those, no more Shermans. And I've got to say, right, I'm not a Sherman guy, and there are lots of things to You're say not about a Sherman guy. This is the, the set for Sherman guys, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it's all the Shermans. All the different flavors. All the different. I can't even say the designations without telling on them. <laughs> but we'll get some other things in Tell there. Tell other things. Also, cool. Including, I'm pleased to see, M24 Chaffee. Mm -hmm. I, if I was building a new American army, this is what I'd be going for. Now, again, in truth, I don't think many of these made it to Europe. Really? They could have done. So it's a... Yeah, because the Sherman could do the job. Yeah, right. Didn't do it as well, but it could do the job. So your M24 Chaffee, brand new kit. Is that right? 2021 yeah, kit? Yeah, 2021. Yeah, this is the late war light tank. So this, this particular card in this set is a veteran one. And you get five of these for 19 points. So they're not, they're not cheap, but what they are, mate, is fast. Tactical yeah. move, 12. So you can move 12 inches on a board that's four foot deep and still shoot twice. That's all right, isn't it? And it's got the same 75 mil gun that comes on the Sherman. Wow. But it's cheaper than the Sherman because it's only got a front armor of four. Has it got a dodge save? Does it get? Does it get? A, does it get a dodge save? It does not. It has smoke, a stabilizer, and self defense AA. But nineteen points for five of these as veterans, and they'd be even cheaper in the in the main army box. I assume that there's a non-veteran version of this. Yeah, which will be cheap. Because everything in here is for a veteran tank platoon. Whether the veteran or is there? Whether the non-veterans have the option to mix all the different tanks, mm. though, that's interesting. Cool. Well, tank, Anti-tank power of ten. And a tactical move of 12, two shots, I'd take it. Let's talk about the sprue. What do you think, John? It's a neat little kit, man. Neat uh, little kit. And what, something have you looked at the stowage? Pleased. Yeah, I was about to say. The the stowage on this is lovely. Little, little baggies, mate. Little baggy. So we've got one that's like three satchels or rucksacks or whatever, packs. And they probably are. It's like the guy's packs just, yeah. just stuck on the side. Got this teeny weeny little tarp, like a rolled up blanket or something. Which is, which is just next to them. And, the, and these, again, they're like your customised tank, give it a little bit of a story to each tank. I mean, obviously, everyone getting this kit is going to try and make a Fury tank, right? Including you. What, out of a Chaffee? No, 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 out of the, out of the <laughs> EZ8. <laughs> okay, right, yeah, sure thing. Um, 
But what, so looking at the chaffy, I mean, you're not going to see it from just looking at the sprue, uh, but it's a, it's a much more modern looking tank. Yeah, in very much in line with The it. Sherman is a very, well, I mean, particularly it's got very, it's got those straight sides, hasn't it? Mm. Quite iconic. That, yes. that shape. This is more recognize. rolling. This, this is, is more... Much more it's still, it, they're still panels. They're like the Pershing, actually. But they're a lot more... Yeah, yeah. You can see that they're later they're war tanks. Definitely design change, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're starting good. to learn about, like, the shallower these angles, the the less, like, the more likely they are to glance. Yep. Yeah. The anti-tank rounds. Because you understand, despite tanks blowing up in movies, anti-tank rounds, they're kinetic penetrators. Is literally so it's a, a, a dart boom goes through. It's in the it's in the tank now, bouncing around. Right? Is that more? Yeah, of it? usually yeah. because you're talking about something with enormous kinetic force. As it pierces the armor, the pressure shock wave. Well, the, the, particularly the pressure will will cause an explosion. Wow. There's a lot of volatile materials inside oh, a tank. A fair few. <laughs> I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. But on, on, under the pressure, and that's often why you'll see tanks. Yeah, so oh, on Gulf War footage, the turrets are hanging, hanging up so, from the pressure change. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the pressure that's caused that, and then starting the fire. Ooh. So uh, dealing with that because it's not about explosive force, it's about kinetic penetration. Mm. The, the the smoother your sides, the more chance you've got of those things glancing off. Wow, yeah. Yeah. absolutely I'm learning. Um, yeah, and this is a really cute looking vehicle. Even the upper hull is somewhat. It's almost bow shaped. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's just a much, different. much more modern looking vehicle. Nice detail in the engine Pushing. deck, but you'll see also again thing lessons learnt from the war. Big crew hatches on the front of the vehicle. Get the hell out. Get out. Kind of yeah. Jobbies. Get yeah. out. These things are important. And again on the side of the hull, just above the skirts, it's got like the was it the jumbo? It's got these. Little like like, like like what buttresses. Are they? Yeah, I don't I don't know what they're. But I imagine as I say, if you, put, about the if you put stowage, is it for just dumping junk on the side of the tank, stopping it sliding along? Because on, a place to on one them. side, you can see a couple of the tank tools and tracks things. that are in there, and a couple. Of oh tools. yeah, so I'm wondering if some that's, of that on. I think you were right. That's like just to stop things. Or just to help with stowage, Rolling and there's out. maybe because this is a 15 mil vehicle. There's maybe even like um, little little loopholes to cable. Get your bungee things. cords on there. Yeah, yeah, or whatever, to tie yeah. things down. Yeah. Look, look, see this one. Again, it's a bit loose. It's because these yeah, screw gates are nice and shallow. That's good. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And the mantlet on it. Isn't that a dinky little mantlet? But it's again, it's very rounded. It's almost sci fi. Gone, man. Yeah. Dalek, man. <laughs> Dalek tank. All right. That's cool, though. It's a nice little tank. Chaffer. Yeah, like it's, it. it's going to. It's going to look and feel very different from your other tanks. What have you got there? You've got four of those. Because it's also the um, the turret is is set back quite a bit further than you're used to with American tanks. Central more than it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, it's not forward. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. It's interesting. Because of the slopes of it, it looks like it's set further back. But you're right, it is down the middle. That's the M24 Chaffee. Um, definitely, you know, it's just different. Yeah, just different, different nice. Sherman's. If I'm doing a new American army, I'm going to get myself some chaffees. So that's those. Nearly there, man. Still stuff, Nearly man. there. Right, now then. You can see some pictures and painting stuff now, because we've actually got these. We've got some. We've got the M8 Greyhound Cavalry Recon Patrol card. Uh, you could get this as a kit yep. already. As, a, as th this, this card and this exact vehicle combination, two M8s and two Jeeps, was a kit from D-Day, yeah. Cavalry Recon Patrol. So what you get in here is the op two different unit options, and it's basically you get two Jeeps and a Greyhound for three points, Oof. or two Jeeps and two Greyhounds for five points. The Greyhound is that, that really iconic-looking M8 with the 37mm gun. To be honest, in a game like Bolt Action, in a skirmish game, yeah. That's that you you be able to put that gun to use. Yeah. Late war in this game, I'm not sure how much value a 37 mil gun has. Is there a difference in price between the M20 and the M8? Well, whether you'd want to take the second one. You, the, yeah. you can't, oh, you can't take an M20. Have, right. This yeah. unit doesn't isn't an M20. This is an M8. <laughs> it's an M8 has to be an M8. Yeah. 
in in that role. You get the two Jeeps and the M8. And they've got the Observer and the Scout and the Spearhead role. So this is your advanced recon. It's going to allow you to advance deployment. We've got oh, a tactical, tactical move of 10 inches, so that's going to give you a significant amount of extra deployment space. The Jeeps come, one's got a 60 mil mortar and one's got a machine gun. <laughs> um but I think you're going to get everything you need out of this yeah. with just with just the one Greyhound. Yeah. Because For I don't purpose just to, to yeah, pump it's one of, forward. Um, even things like I think probably Bren carriers and Hannah Manx and this have got front armor of two, so these can actually bounce a 37 mil gun on a six or at long range. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you know Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's um, it's a pretty light weapon, and you've only got a moving rate of fire of one, and it's overworked. Yeah. Which means if you move, you've got an extra plus one to hit. I don't think... I'm not saying it's useless, but Flames of War isn't a game where a lot of soft skins and light vehicles no. on the table. And if you want to kill infantry with a vehicle, you're only going to really achieve that with machine guns while they're moving, yeah. or with heavy artillery while they're stationary. So as much as at first glance you're going, oh yeah, I'll take that second Greyhound because they're really cool. And yeah, I actually think the, the gun on the Greyhound is going to make the difference. No point. Whereas it's got a 50 cal on it, so that's still got some use. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, still have it bouncing about. Still have it bouncing about. Like a lot of recon cars, though this is a six-wheeler, the cross check of four is going to cause you problems. Cross check yeah. of four, you're going to struggle to deal off-road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes with units like this, you think, oh, I might, I might sort of be able to sneak and peek it. You know, no. back it up into a forest and do a bit of observing. So, yeah, well, you're going to make that cross check every yeah, time to luck. get anywhere, mate. I don't know whether you're ever going to get there. Oi, oi, oi. Um, and that's worth bearing in mind if you're doing that, if you're going to use this for your spearhead, for your, you know, the way the spearhead rolls up. Yeah. In the pre game, you make an advanced move. You make an extra move, and that's increased your deployment zone for subsequent units as you deploy. But this thing being just a gonna, wheeled vehicle just might not bog get it down where in you... a cop somewhere. <laughs> yeah. you know. But it's well, all right. Well, it, you know, you got black bacage, but if you're somebody who tends to line the edges of your roads with, with steep banks at hedges and things like that, this might not get off the roads. No. <laughs> Isn't that game? Railroaded. You might need to plan that you know, it, because it's wheeled. It could be an issue. Um, but you get two of them uh, and, and the two Jeeps, so you can make the larger of the two units. Same kit does make the M20. Yeah, I saw that on there. But, um, but the M20 is, is... In Flames of War, I've only seen the M20 used as part of a security detachment, which I think, again, they come in pairs. Right. A pair of M20s are used. And they're like... Um, um, I don't know, like like uh, logistics guard units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not saying that they're not they're not potentially useful, but you're gonna have one of them left over. So we're, we're, and they come as a pair in the box. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know whether you're gonna get. Um, either. If I was if I was looking at this, what would I do with this with my leftover? I definitely wouldn't take the second greyhound. I don't think you need it. So would I, would I paint you'd, it You'd up? make it as an M20 and you'd have it parked up on and the side. Up. I think so. I'd be tempted to make a second Greyhound and buy another pair of Jeeps. Yeah. But maybe get the airborne Jeep so you've got the different crew. So you've between them, you've got the flexibility to have the, f the different unit types. Same, but different. Same, but different, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the crew for that... It is. Do they come separately? Yes. They're yes. on one of the screws in with the tank commanders. Oh, I see. You've got these crew. So the crew you get in here is the army crew. There's another version of this, and the guys have got, like, scrim on the helmet and so forth. Right. Um, so I don't know what the Americans call it, scrim. They've got crap on their helmets. Yeah, they make them look like paratroopers. Things, you know. And they've got more, more pockets. Um, right. So for each of the Jeeps, you've got four guys. You've got a guy, the steering wheel is part of the figure. Not the Jeep. <laughs> the driver. That's not a bad thing. You the guy who looks like not. he's holding something slightly dubious that he's taking home for the weekend Whoa. for his own pleasure. That's actually the 60 mil motor. He's carrying it on his lap. Okay, right. Fair dues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the guy the guy standing up like he's giving a sermon, he's on the 50 cal gunner. 
He not, said, I thought he was binoculars. I'm not going to lie. I thought he was like binoculars. No, I, th I think that's... No, the, you're all right. The, he's the, on the 50 cal. He's, he's on the 50 cal. He's like this. Yeah, yeah. That's him. And then the last guy... And what's that he is, doing? Is it like radio man? No, that's actually that that's rifle? his rifle. That He's just holding his rifle. Big rifle, man. It, it is. It is. Um, when I and this is symptomatic of the material they've made yeah, this yeah. out of. That's... This is um, when I got this kit and I and I, I you know, I'm gonna lie. When I, I saw that man thinking, I thought, what is that? And then I saw because it's got like a loop down the side. I was like, oh, it is a rifle. Yeah. That's pretty big. It just looks, yeah. It's not. It's, just... it's the iron sight looks huge for the scale. But actually, once it was painted at a distance, you've never looked at that no, model and said that, that no. we're actually like we're actually really drilling down into these. Does it matter at this scale? No. They they have provided us with some proof figures Oosh. rather than an empty jeep, and they're all right floating around. They're not they're not magnificent, but they're all right. Yeah, Def I've painted these. I wasn't unhappy with them. No. I, I had some reservations when I looked at it. Did you show them the proof for the super end? Yeah, a little bit, but obviously, hopefully, there'll be some stills, right? With yeah, no, because just from a design perspective, it's it's interesting this one. So we've seen um, Battlefront of of got different ways of of doing the same thing, mm. and this one, so you can see that it's mostly the same, but the M twenty and the M eight have a different upper hull. Oh yes, there's not yeah. quite. Yeah, this yeah. is more one of the other, right? Yeah, so um, yeah, now it's entirely possible that the people that have got mo more time and skill than I have could make those interchangeable, but it looks like a lot of faff to me. What was also interesting, though, is sometimes when they build some of these smaller vehicles, I think it's to be able to get the definition, they assemble the side panels fit together, fit oh, yeah. to a lower hull, and then an upper hull sits on top of the side panels rather than on top that, of the hull. And then that. But this one's got some keying in it. Can you see there's a big rhombus shape that you yep. slot those side panels into internally. When I bought, so when I made this, it's actually, it's really good that, because it means you get, you get those lines perfectly straight and I found the top part fitting on very easily. Yeah, that is very defined as to where it goes and yeah. how it goes. Yeah, yeah. That's clever that, okay. It is, good. and it means that they've been able to mold the wheels in there if you've ever been in the business of having to stick wheels, metal wheels on a resin vehicle, for example, it's like, wherever possible, please do not ask me to glue these wheels because I want them all facing the same way. Yeah, it can be done, but they're all over Yeah, absolutely. That's a fun exercise. So this is a, this is, this is a, a very pleasing kit to make. I, in, I enjoyed this, and it makes a really cute little vehicle. And the same with the Jeep Sprue while we were talking oh, about I it. the Jeep. Because the Jeep Sprue has still got visions of the future on it, John. Visions of the future? Visions of the has future. Has it got bits that bits haven't that don't exist. stuff yet? Yes. Can you see what they are? I might have the cut-down version without the bonnet. Uh, <laughs> can I see what they are? I can see... What, what can I see... What nothing, mate. Seen, I can see nothing that. Because these are teeny what's, weeny what's parts. Different? This is this is the cutest model kit that I've ever hand rolled in I my life. I do like it. They make beautiful little jeeps. Right. What you can see is you can see things like Pintle mounted Lewis guns, mate. Where? Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. There is two of now, those. What are the chances that the U.S. Army have got Pintle mounted Lewis guns on uh, the jeeps? I don't think it was their thing. Do you right? know who does have Pintle mounted you know, Lewis like, guns? SAS and stuff, right? Like SAS and stuff, mate. But more importantly, British Airborne. Probably yeah. not SAS LRDG, although they did have them. But there's, so, there's, you mentioned the bonnet, the bonnet's not on here. You've got two different bonnet types for one, two different types one, of Jeep. One is smooth. One is smooth and one is not. Different. And you've got two different backs of the Jeeps as well. One's with a folded canopy and one's without the canopy a part of it. And another interesting little design choice, you've got, again, you've got some of these like pouches for hanging over the side, jerry cans, nice little cute bits of stowage. The rear compartment. Oh, the stowage. You may have a guy sat in a rear compartment, like the, the American rifleman with the mortar mm. in there. But if you haven't, you've got this like stowage compartment filler. Do you see this bit alongside the wheels, John? This like, yeah. Top clip. Yeah, so it just kind of fits in and makes it look oh. like they're using it for supplies and stuff. All right. 
Yeah, I'm down with that. There's, There's a lot of stuff you can do with this kit. Yeah, and and I, said I just that, saw two jeeps, man. That's you just you just saw two jeeps. Yeah, it's the only deeper. snag with this kit, which isn't it's not a problem uh, potentially for you, um, depending on how you want to use it, is this isn't one that you can you can kind of like. All right, I'll have this one, and you can have that one. Give it to me. Because it, it doesn't it doesn't fit on all oh, the bonnets yeah, are here yeah and all of the all all, all the all the backs are here yeah, just clip the bits off put it in a bag and give it to your <laughs> yeah, body yeah yeah Oosh. absolutely but yeah those nice little bits of stowage so you've got a pintle mounted thirty cal on there I think there's a pintle mounted fifty yeah there's a fifty cal here so you can make several different versions of this jeep that's good really nice and, and certainly in their case the uh, Americans you've got the you get a version of this with airborne crew, as I say. You know, it's you know, same. This spoo's the same. Different crew spoo. Just yeah. Crew spoo. Crew spoo, mate. Crew, crew spoo. That was the last of the vehicle. Oosh. So the Bastone Parachute Rifle Platoon. Then uh, love this, John, because you get the not special Loads rule in it. Nuts, man. Nuts. That's what that there dude said, right? That's what McCarthy said. German commander says. You Vince Ender, for like, you oh. the voice over, and all those things. Oh, he nuts. Did. And he said, nuts. Was that it? <laughs> the story goes, the guy, you know, an adjutant or whatever, walks into his command post, like, sir, the Nazis want us to surrender. And he's like, nuts. <laughs> and the guy's like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, I'll send them that reply. That nuts. Be dumb. And that's what they do. And, and the, American, the German commander receives this what? reply. It's just one word. You know, if you want your surrender, you said, Nats, what does this mean? <laughs> Whether it was a deliberate piece of obfuscation, but it's gone down, you know, in uh, military history legend that that's, 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 does how, it, it, that's how does it, it down. Does it represent their, their sort of grit? Because the not special rule gives you two plus. They're not moving that's, anywhere. That's how you're going to fend them off. Digging in, mate. So the, the dudes that you get, you've got a one, two, three, four different sprue types in pairs. So two of this one, two of that one, four times. And then two heavy weapon sprues, one with a pair of Zookas on, one with a 60 mil mortar. This unit... Is that all the things? You can take all, all the things. Basically, this unit, you get seven rifle teams, a mortar team, a Zooka team, is the biggest base unit. And the options are add another Zooka, got an extra Zooka there, add another up to two M1919, that's the Browning 30 cal LMG teams. We've got those. Yeah, well, so on this this LMG team sprue, oh, there's, an, there's a sprue with MGs on it. What you would tend to do with that's a dedicated machine gun team base rather right. than a 30 cal carried in a squad support role. Yeah. You use the one on a tripod. To represent that That's model, the one. and you've got a pair of those. Okay, yeah, sweet. I, would. I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily right or wrong, but it shows there's a visual difference yeah. between my sustained fire machine gun. Yeah, exactly. Like set up for drilling. So these these models, you know, we're not going to talk. talk we, there's so much talk out there about a lot of the new resin processes. Yeah. These are made out of the new thermoplastic, um, and everyone's got their own views on that. We'll get you some stills on that. Cool. For me, they seem to be getting better over time. Yep. I think the definition on some of these models is very nice. But these are not new sculpts, so far as I can tell. I think these are the same ones that you got with the D-Day release. Right. They are that ones. If you're looking to recreate that that um, Bastogne Winter Fetal, yeah. you might want to get a hold of some Winter Army models because the Great Coats, it's not a unique... There's not a unique a great coat for the airborne. They actually uh, nicked right. most of them off the army guys that retreated through the areas. Like, if you're going you're somewhere warm, then give me that. You got yeah. a bath and a hot meal. Give me a coat. Yeah, exactly. Give me a coat. <laughs> <laughs> well, stab you. Um, so, Sweet. and that'll that'll just help give you that that kind of authenticity. I think and give you that baston feel. Well, they didn't all have great coats, but the ones no. that they had were from the army. Sweet. Mate, uh, so that's us having had a look at this. To be repeat some of the pictures afterwards. Um, I think I think this is fantastic. I, I mean, think if all of their starter sets were like this, it's got ups and it's got downs. But mostly ups. Most of it is new as a value proposition. What did we say? Was it eighteen vehicles? It was a fair few, sir. Eighteen yeah. vehicles, platoon of infantry, star rule book, all the all the bits. The the for me, MVP as it were, surprise winner is the Calliope. You going with that? And I'll tell you why. Is because my expectations of it were quite low. 
Okay. I was hoping for a plastic upgrade, bro. That it was right. a, that it was a, there was a, like a clip on thing. Yeah. And when it wasn't that, and I was like, oh no, oh, no not good. It's gonna be some resin no. and metal thing. And then when I've got it, I've literally got the thing in my hands and thinking, this is way better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, considering the material and everything else. Yeah, yeah, and my, and my, my kind of expectation of, yeah. of of resin. This is I'm not I mean I'm not saying it's like super duper mega. But, but it's just much, better than you expect. Much better than I expected. I'm, you know, happy I days. happily will glue this to one of the many spare turrets right in there. That. That's me. What right, about you? Me? Yeah, take Mate, away from I, this. I, I, regards to new things, I quite like the Chumbo. You like the Chumbo? I do like the Chumbo. You like Rules the Rules wise of... and uh, <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's, got, yeah. it's got all the little nods, the extra uh, track flaps that they've done on there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they're all good kits. I should really. They're all nice. And, and the kits. I should really de do definitely these. Look at the chaffy. These, these kits. They're wargaming kits, and they're getting better yes. at making wargaming kits. In fact, you can probably in see this the, box alone, the full you history of it. The, you know, the, the first M3. one we did. Yeah. I, I tell you how. This is almost plastic kit number one. You look at the machine guns plastic alone. Kit. Yeah. The first one's got four connecting points. Yeah. The next one's got three connecting points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last one's got, got two connecting points. And it's like, wow, you can actually take these out without snapping the barrel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the evolution. Fu future back from plastics, really solid. Genuinely, for me, John, Nine out of ten. This box, honest, honest opinion. Lot. I'm really pleased with all the vehicles that are in there. The only thing that's a very, very slight disappointment is the. I would have preferred army infantry because I've already got all the hit the beach paratroopers. Oh, right. I've Pretty already got selfish. Right? It's winter. You remember we <laughs> did done. that learn to play winter yes, edition on the beach. Yeah, I've got a full company of paratroopers already don't painted for normal. winter. I don't want to touch another one of them again in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Job done. So I would have liked um, for me, army infantry would have been better. Yeah. What about you? What's, what what uh, favorite piece? Marks out of ten, I'd give it one. Yeah, um, You'd give it one. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. Um, my favorite piece of the kits, I do like. I do like the new jumbo kit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Is that is that the one with the uh, that's track the big extensions? one with the yeah? I think that's yeah. Mm? It's just it's a jumbo, mate. It's just jumbo. It's just jumbo. You just want a tank you can win with. Yeah. All right, guys. That was our review of the new American Spearhead Force for Late War 1944 Flames of War. Fantastic kit. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed the video and you're tempted by the US Bulge Starter Force, you can buy it from modelingforadvantage.co.uk. It's a great way to support the channel. Thank you. gonna be whiny. whiny. <laughs> I'm gonna be whiny. I used to be a sad little crab. No, a drab little crab. I used to be a drab little crab. Now I'm a shiny fucking crustacean. On the <laughs> shiny. Shiny. Get the things out. Get the things out. Get the things out. Got the things out. Did I tell you Alfred's learned the phrase toy shop? Toy shop? Yeah, mate. Toy shop, toy shop, toy shop! Yeah. Toy shop! He's also decided he wants to come to work with me if he's awake in the morning. He's like, ah, oh, daddy's leaving the house. When daddy leaves the house, we go to a toy shop. But no, son, I'm going to work. <laughs>
Brat, are you recording, sir? Both are on. Both are on. Are you ready? Never. Are you sure? are you Always. Sure? Hello and welcome. 